Hi, everybody. My name is Vicki Lee. If you like my speaking, please like, share, and subscribe. We have been talking about women in the last few weeks. We have been talking about women and doing their calling in churches. We have been talking about um, we should do our calling respected regardless of our gender. I had gone into First Timothy and I had talked about the scripture that's always being used about women being quiet. I had gone into actual historical documentation that has been put forward that shows you that it, it was a cultural context for the city of Ephesus. And then yesterday we did a teaching on women being uh, churches being disenfranchised from disenfranchised from the Southern Baptist Convention because uh, they had women in the pulpit, one of which had been in the pulpit for 30 years. So now we're going to talk a little bit about another subject that I had brought to the table months ago. As usual, I'm going to put the link down in the description box because I took on domestic abuse and violence. And this article is going to segue into some of the different things that happen. And this is going to be about women. And it's also going to be about different facets in the church that I've already addressed. So here we go. The gates are wide open. They're opening. And this is going to be a subject of much conjecture with a lot of people stepping forward. Some of them, like in this article, are going to have kind of left the premise of the church because of some issues. And I talk about that a lot too. Have you been hurt by the church? God strives with us, doesn't he? Through all our circumstances, through all of it. And he brings us to him. It's just a part of our journey. Okay, this is called, it's a commentary, Southern Baptist Convention Silences Women. This was uh, written in March 31st of 2022 by Gabe Hart, and that's H-A-R-T. For the first 25 years of my life, I attended church religiously. I was an active member of the youth group in a Southern Baptist church. I enrolled in college at Union University, a conservative Southern Baptist institution. When I graduated, I became the youth minister at my home church and eventually a deacon at the same church. I don't think about those times often, but last week I was reminded of the life I once lived. So he was hurt. Over the course of the last year, the Southern Baptist Convention has been investigated for covering up accusations of sexual abuse of women by clergy. On May 22nd, the Independent Report, which was fought tooth and nail by high-ranking members of the Southern Baptist Convention, was released and filled with information that was appalling but not surprising to anyone who has been in an SBC church and left. While the allegations of sexual abuse were horrific, the treatment of the accusers was something that was both sickening and expected. Women who came forward about being abused by men in power in their church were either silenced or stonewalled. They were made to feel as if they were in the wrong or would or would be responsible for the demise of their church. They were sacrificed on the altar of the greater good. In SBC churches, women are not allowed to be pastors or youth ministers or music ministers, but in my old church, women also could not be Sunday school teachers if a class had men members. My church was not an SBC outlier. This was the typical line of thinking in all SBC churches. When the culture created that when the culture created is that mis, mis, misogynistic, women have no voice, no voice in leadership and no voice in emergencies. They are silenced by fundamental religious oppression that is cloaked in spirituality. When abuse occurs, where do they go? And in the description box, I talk about that a couple of months ago. Where do you go when they come to us for help? That means I need help. While sexual abuse is clearly abhorrent, the culture of Southern Baptist churches and most other religious institutions leads itself to all types of abuse being dismissed or covered up. If a tenant of belief is that a man should be the head of the household, the spiritual leader in a marriage, or the only gender qualified to lead a church, the balance of power is uneven from the beginning. I've heard pastors tell women to stay in physically abusive marriages if there's any way you can work it out. I've seen women be guilted into staying in verbally and emotionally abusive marriages because the husband asked for forgiveness. And as a Christian, forgiveness is a cornerstone the entire faith is built upon. It's why Jesus died on the cross of atonement. As a woman of faith who is expected to look to her husband for spiritual leadership, how can she not forgive him if he asks to be forgiven? The moral expectation is to stay and pray for strength and pray for your husband, even as a victim of abuse. And I talked 
in this article below about what happened to me in an abusive marriage that was threatening to be physical and how I was told to stay. So I am vouching for the validity of some of what is being said here in certain situations in churches. Recently, I began a relationship with my partner who also spent the first part of her life in the church. We were both in the same youth group and both grew up in the culture of the SBC. Over the years, we lost touch, but about a year and a half ago, we found each other again this time as she was recovering from an abusive marriage to a person in church leadership. And I talk about that in that article. In the urban and socially progressive church she attended, she was encouraged time after time to be vulnerable and open in a marriage that was emotionally and verbally abusive. She went to a biblical counselor. The church provided for individual and mutual marriage counseling. In a session by herself, the counselor listened to her explain the abuse she was receiving, and though he seemed to understand and empathize, he told her to forgive and move towards her husband in the relationship. I address that. <laughs> the counselor wouldn't let her use the word abuse because he said it could hurt the husband. They moved to a suburban church where she watched her husband interact with the congregation there in a jovial and charming way, and she watched those same people adore his humor and intelligence. She questioned herself, even though what she experienced in her home was secret, explosive rages, threatening behaviors, and verbal attacks. It took her trying to leave four or five, four times over two years for her to finally break the cycle. There has been an un unraveling of 15 years of hurt and pain, and there will continue to be work done to heal the scars of emotional turmoil. She went to the church with a cry for help. And while she, the well-meaning, the church enabled the abuse to continue. Please listen to the article below. I talk about all of this in that article. Uh, let's see. Um, the system that is in place in Christianity has been for centuries is one that allows men to yield an unhealthy amount of power over women. It allows small abuses to go unnoticed and allows leaders with the best of intentions to encourage women to go back to their abusers in order to save the marriage. As a white heterosexual male, I have reckoned with inequalities and abuses that I will most likely never experience. I have recognized and understood and fought against racial inequalities and disparities. I can fully support and fight for the continuance of marriage equality and freedom of LGBTQ men and women to have the same rights as everyone else. So in this article, let's just say that this guy or this person has been very, very hurt and has gone into some of the world's thinking. The Bible speaks about these those issues as well. Okay, so that's a whole nother thing, but I'm reading the article. Gender equity has been my last bridge to cross. I've logically understood it, but I haven't uh, emotionally connected to it until recently. When I heard about the SBC and the abuse that occurred there, I wasn't shocked. I was sad though I know that um, environment well. I was encouraged to see that the SBC named the names of the leaders being accused. That needed to happen. We have to give a voice to people who don't have one. And in the world of Christianity, women are the ones who are most often silenced. Thank you for that article, Gabe. I'm sorry that you were hurt. I'm sorry that your partner has been hurt. And I'm sorry that we still lag behind. This is talking about the Southern Baptist Convention. In my last speaking, I told you I was raised Southern Baptist. I've talked to you about the wonderful work that they do. But where areas of women are concerned, this is what can happen. And this is what is happening. And now this is coming out in reports that it has been happening and it's been covered over and women have been victimized, not only by the aggressors, not only by the people who would perpetrate them, but by a church that will not wake up and see to it that it's done. This is my second day in a row of speaking about the Southern Baptist Convention. This is my second day in a row of bringing critiques to the table. This first critique that I did about women in ministry is something I had talked about before they ousted these women. What is being said in this article is something that I had talked about months ago that I put down below. You can see on the day that that was proliferated that I was already on top of this, having experienced it myself. And so where women are concerned, the church really needs to come to grips 
with women. Women have a right to be heard. Women have a right not to be abused as well as men. And men can be abused as well as women. And in the article below, in the description box, you'll find where I speak about that as well. We've got work to do in the body of Christ. We need to pick this up and deal with it. I think that the men being accused in the report that he refers to, their names being put out there, that was a good step. That's a good step. And you know what? These men need due process. They need to be given a fair shake. They don't need to have their name processed and then I say, well, they did it. They did it unless it is found that they did it. Okay. Because we carry these crosses, don't we? And we judge people based on something that is still under inspection. There are people in these articles and in these instances that could be the abusers. They could have done it. And then they can turn their life around to the power of Christ and come back in and, and be leaders and teach others. We don't know the end from the beginning, do we? And I teach about that all the time. But this is an article that segued. Let's think about our women, okay? Women are told to be submissive. When you, women are powerful beings, very powerful beings. And when you ask a woman to submit, she is depending on the men to be the leaders they're supposed to be. We're supposed to protect our own, aren't we? Those sheep, the shepherd protects his sheep. He does not let them wander off into danger, even internally, even from leadership. So I'm bringing some hot button issues to the table. It's got the Southern Baptist Convention's name all over it. And let me say, I was raised in it and I love them. They do wonderful, wonderful, wonderful work. I hope this helps everybody. If you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. I always say it's a relationship. It's never a religion. And don't get confused with what humanity does. The relationship, that exchange policy is between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they are perfect and they will not let you down. And you have people like this who write these articles and you have people like me who speak into these subjects so we can be a stronger, healthier family. If you like my speaking, please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day, everybody.